Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Crossroads Online. Hey, I'm Austin, and on behalf of our staff, we're so glad to have you all here for our online worship service today. Hey, we pray that God speaks to you in your heart in a very special way this morning. And with that being said, we're ready to get the ball rolling for online service today. First things first, each and every Sunday, we encourage you all to share this video with someone you know or someone you don't know to give them a chance to be a part of our worship experience today. And look, that simply means you've taken out your cell phone and maybe you're texting someone you work with, maybe you're texting a business partner, maybe you're texting a, texting a family friend, but invite, invite right now. And all you have to do is cut, uh, click on and copy the YouTube URL link for this video and simply press send in a text message or a social media media message today and you could do either one of those two but we're encouraging you right now to share this video also if you're online go ahead and like the video and make sure you're subscribed so each and every Sunday you'll get a notification when we're streaming online go ahead and share and take a moment to share with your friends and family members today's video also, we're going to move right along to our question of the day. That's right. Our question of the day is back in full effect, and it's really simple for today. The question is, what is your favorite springtime activity? All right? The weather is starting to change. Now, we do see a little bit of rain this time, so it's not fully warm. However, we do see a difference in this part of the year than it's opposed to the cold winter months. So what do you enjoy doing? during the springtime. For me personally, I think it's time for me to go ahead and get out and get active. So every year during the spring, I am outside more. I may go out for running more, uh, playing a little basketball outside more, doing a little more activities, going out, to re going out to eat and sitting outside is something that's different because usually, look, if I go out to eat, you know, during the winter months, I'm inside. You know, they got the whole heater thing and that's pretty cool, but the springtime is when I officially say, all right, we're going for brunch or going somewhere for dinner we can feel comfortable going ahead and sitting outside. So let us know in the comment section below, what's your favorite springtime activity? What do you enjoy doing once the weather starts to change? We wanna make sure we're engaging with you all on social media during the week as well. So if you haven't, make sure you're following us on Instagram and following us on Facebook. Our handle is at Crossroads ATL. That's our username. So look, follow all of us because we've got a bunch of updates and notifications coming your way. And we make, wanna make sure you're tuned in for everything we've got cooking here at Crossroads Online. So make sure at Crossroads ATL, you're following us and engaging with us on Facebook and on Instagram. All right, Crossroads fam, final call for you right now. Go ahead and get your last second coffee. Maybe it's your tea. Maybe it's your bowl of oatmeal that you made. Also, make sure you got your pen and paper ready for when PD continues with the sermon series. We're starting service with praise and worship in three, two, one. Come on, put your hands together right here. Come on. Everybody clap. Come on. Give it up for the most holy. Give it up for his majesty, almighty. For the one. For the one who is king of kings. For the one who is everything, all we need. All of your people saying yes. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory. Come on. All of your people, we give you the glory, Lord. Come on, say it with me. All of your people. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory, Lord. Come on, that's a good place to praise them. Give it up. Put your hands together. Come on. Lift it up. Lift it up to the name of them. Lift it up to the one we trust. Marvelous. To the one. To the one who is everywhere. And he's answering every prayer. Always there. Come on, say all of your people. All of your people, we give you the come on. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory, Lord. 
Come on, sing it to your king. Say, all of your people, all your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory. Come on, stay right there. Say, all of your people, say. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory, Lord. Somebody give them glory. All of your people, all of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh hallelujah, there's nobody like Oh hallelujah, there's nobody like Oh hallelujah, there's nobody like you, like oh, like Lord. Come on, he's the king of kings. All of you do, there's nobody like Oh hallelujah, there's nobody like Oh hallelujah, there's nobody like you. Come on, do that again. Say, Oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah. What's the highest praise? Oh hallelujah, there's nobody like Oh, hallelujah, there's nobody like you, Lord. Come on, one more time. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, there's nobody like you. Oh, hallelujah. Let me hear you, crossroads. Oh, hallelujah, there's nobody like you, Lord. All glory, all glory, all glory to you, Lord. Say it with me if you know it. All glory, let me hear you. All glory, say all the glory. All glory is to you, Lord. Come on, say it again. All the glory, all glory, all glory, all glory to you. One more again, say all glory, all glory, all glory. Say, all of your people, all of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory, Lord. Somebody give him glory right there. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory. All of your people, we give you the glory, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. There's nobody like. Oh, hallelujah. There's nobody like. Oh, hallelujah, there's nobody like Lord. Oh, oh, hallelujah, there's nobody like. Oh, hallelujah, there's nobody like. Oh, hallelujah, there's nobody like Lord. Somebody break out in the praise right there. Come on, do it for real. God, we lift you up. We glorify you. We honor you. There's no one like you. So we give you our best praise. You deserve it all. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. There's nobody like. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. There's nobody like. Oh, hallelujah. There's nobody like you, Lord. Come on, say it like you believe it. Oh, oh, hallelujah. There's nobody like. Oh, hallelujah. There's nobody like. Oh, hallelujah. There's nobody like you, Lord. One more time, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, there's nobody like, oh hallelujah, there's nobody like, oh hallelujah, there's nobody like the Lord. Come on, last time. Oh hallelujah, there's nobody like, oh hallelujah, there's nobody like, oh hallelujah, there's nobody like the Lord. Somebody praise him for the victory right now. God, we give you glory. God, you're so great. Come on, somebody else, praise them for the victory. Victory in your circumstance. Victory in your situation. Come on, put your hands. Come on, keep clapping right there. Oh, oh, oh. That's what praise sounds like. Oh, 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 oh. that's simple. You say it with it. Say, oh, oh, oh. Everybody say it. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. How great 
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. If you know he's great, lift him up right now. Everybody say, say how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Somebody give him praise. Come on, we gotta sing that one more time. Let me hear you say it. Say how great, how great. Come on, lift your voice to say. Come on, you gotta say it like you mean it. All we'll see, all we'll see how great, how great is our God, is our God. Come on, lift it up for your God right now. Here we go. I lift my hands to give you glory. I lift my hands to give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Everybody say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I lift my hands to give you glory. I lift, I lift my hand to give you praise. I pray to Lord. I pray to Lord. Let me hear you say, yeah. 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 I lift my hand to give you glory, Lord. I lift my hand. To give you praise, I praise you, Lord. 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 Let me see your praise in this place. Everyone that's praising, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let me see you praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord, regardless of what it looks like. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you. Come on, you got to sing that. Make that a song to you. Hey, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you. It's real simple. I'll praise you, Lord. Come on, you got it by now. Say, I'll praise you. I'll praise you. Lord, From the bottom of my heart, I praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise From the depths of my soul, I praise you, Lord. Yeah. You, Lord. I'll praise you. When things are feeling bad, I praise you, Lord. Lord, I'll praise you. When I'm in need of healing, I praise you, Lord. Lord, I'll praise When I'm in need of restoration, I praise you, Lord. Come on, everybody sing it. Say, I'll praise you, Lord. Sing it from your heart. I'll praise you. Come on, let them sing it. Say, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise Come on, you can sing it. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you. Everybody say, I'll praise you, Lord. Yes. Come on, everybody together. I'll praise. Yes. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. 
I'll praise you. Come on, where's your praise? Where's your praise? You just told him, you said, I praise you, Lord. Regardless of what it feels like, I praise you, Lord. Regardless how heavy it is, I praise you, Lord. Yes. Hey, I praise you, Lord. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds and the casting down of imaginations, I praise you, Lord. Praise is your weapon. I praise you, Lord. I praise you. I praise you. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh. we praise you, Lord. We praise you. Come on, do it. We praise you, Lord. Come on, crossroads. Give him a real praise. We praise you. We praise you one more time. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. So, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Who wants to be overcome by his presence? Come on, surrender right now. And yeah, here we go. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. That could ever come close. Nothing can compare. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. You're our living hope. Say your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Say I've tasted and see. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. Of the sweetest of love. When my heart becomes free. When my heart becomes free. And my shame. And my shame is undone. Come on, there is therefore no condemnation. Your presence, Lord. Come on, you can come to his presence boldly. So Holy Spirit said, Holy Spirit. Are well God, we welcome you here. Come flood this place and view the atmosphere. Come on, surrender. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long Let me hear you say it. To be overcome by your presence. Come on, say it again. Holy Spirit, say. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood. This place and through the atmosphere, your glory, your glory, God is what our hearts long to be overcome. Be overcome. Come on, stay right there. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. God, you are welcome here. Come flood this place. Have your way in this place, Lord. Your glory, God. That is what our heart longs to be over. Come on. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the animals. Your glory, your glory, God is what to long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him a real surrender. We surrender to your presence, oh God, yeah. 
your presence is here, yeah. Come on, worship again. Let me hear you worship. Come on, release your sound. Release your worship. Release your praise. Hallelujah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place. God, fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God. God, we long for you. We long for you. God, we don't want anything else but you. All we want is you, God. All we want is you. Hallelujah. It's the fervent prayer of the righteous that availeth much. You come to him boldly. You are his child. He is your king. He is your father. He's your savior. He's your righteousness. He's your salvation. He's your redeemer. He's your deliverer. He's your healer. He's your everything. So Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Say it with us. Come flood this place. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be. By your presence, Lord. One more time. Holy Spirit, you are Come on, sing it from your heart. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Come on, he loves how you sing it. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence. Come across those one more time. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place place and feel the end say your glory your glory god is what our hearts long to be your by your presence by your presence Lord. father god we just beseech you right now father god because in your presence there's fullness of joy oh god there's fullness of joy in your presence, oh God. So if anyone feels that they need to come to the altar, come right now. You who are standing at, who are watching at home, stand to your feet and acknowledge God as your Lord, your Savior, your all in all, because he is all in all. He is all that we need. He is all that is necessary for salvation. He is all that we need for healing. He is all that we need for peace. So we say hallelujah to you, God. You are El Shaddai, hallelujah. We all that you are, Father God, is all that we need, Father God. So we bless you. There's so much peace in your presence. There's healing in your presence. There's forgiveness in your presence, Father God. So we bless you, Father. There is none like you. We worship you in this place, Father God, in your presence, in your presence, in your presence. We find, we find what we need. There's prosperity in your presence, Father God. What we need is in your presence, Father God. That's why we long for it, Father God. We long for you, Father God. We love you. We grab hold of you. We lean into you. We expect from you, Father God, because you love us. You love us. 
you love us so much, Father God, that you shed your own blood. What we could not do, you did for us. So we acknowledge you. We love you. Oh, we adore you, oh God. We bless you, Father God. We set our hearts on one accord in this place, Father God, and where we're watching at home. Our hearts are together. They're knit together. And you said, where two or three are gathered, I'm there. Your presence is here. Your presence is here, and we bless you. We praise you for your presence, Father, in Jesus' name. Let everybody say it. Amen. Welcome to Crossroads Online. My name is Austin Smith, and on behalf of our entire Crossroads staff, we want to welcome you all to our service again this morning. Hey, if this is your very first time hanging out with us, our prayer is that you receive what God has in store for you. And again, if it's your first time, we want to officially welcome you as a VIP. So what does that mean? That simply means that we want to get to know you personally a little bit better and hear about your story. And check this out. So we can best connect with you. We want you all to do us a quick favor. Again, if this is your very first time as a guest and visitor here on Crossroads Online, type the words or letters rather VIP to the following number. That number is 404-348-0796. Again, one more time, 404-348-0796. Type the words, letters, sorry, VIP to that number. And again, our team is gonna reach out to you. They're gonna connect with you and check this out. They've got a gift waiting for you as well because you're a VIP today. So do that for us. We can't wait to get to know you a little bit better. Also, Crossroads fan, we wanna remind you all that here in the comment section below, we enjoy engaging with you all. So right now, go ahead and drop your favorite emoji in the comment section below. It can be a fire sign, it could be the hundred sign, it could be the praise hands. Drop your favorite emoji. Let me see a bunch of them this morning. And also, take a quick second to greet someone you know or you may not know in the comment section as well. You can at their name with a double peace sign, or at their name with a double fist sign. Whoever you see in the comment section this morning commenting along with you, say what's up to them. And don't forget, drop plenty of your favorite emojis. I can't wait to see what you all decide to use this morning. Crossroads fam, again, hey, we're so grateful for you all in regards to your generosity. You all continue to make an impact here with our ministry, and we see where your hearts are. We see how you're so faithful. And look, we're grateful for you because, again, you all help us continue to do the mission of God here at Crossroads Church. So here we are again in the service, and we want to give you all an opportunity to give if it's on your heart to do so this morning. And we've got two easy methods for you today. The very first one is via Cash App. So if you've got Cash App on your smartphone, all you have to do is open it, type in that amount that's on your heart to give, and then when the two section comes up, just input our username. That's dollar sign at Crossroads ATL. From there, you'll have us and you'll be good to go. And then the four section, you can put if it's for your tithes or for your offerings. Now, if you don't have Cash App installed on your phone, no worries, because we do have a giving feature on our church website. So you can head on over to crossroadsatl.com forward slash give. Again, that's crossroadsatl.com forward slash give. When you get there, there will be some instructions that are very easy for you to do so you can submit your giving online. So two methods for you, Crossroads fam, in regards to giving today. All right, as you all are finishing up your giving, we're about to swing it right back to praise and worship. Good morning, everybody. What's up? This is Pastor Darren. I'm coming to you from Crossroads Church. This is our online edition of Crossroads Online. Hey, thank you for joining our service this morning. Wherever you are, thank you for attending. I hope you got the whole family with you, man. I'm grateful that you're here and that you're attending today. Now, listen, next week we'll be in person. Man, it's going to be awesome. All right? So, again, thank you for being here this morning. We started a new teaching series last week. It's called Faith for That. Today we're talking about faith to destroy mental strongholds. Let's pray. Father, thank you for allowing us to be here, for your goodness toward us, your grace toward us. You're so kind and awesome. You're beyond our ability to understand, but you 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 uh, introduce yourself to us, but then you pattern do patterns and just things you do to teach us more about you. So we're grateful. Thank you for this moment. Open our eyes, our ears, our understanding that we might be doers of the word, not just hearers. We thank you in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody say amen. All right, well, listen. 
Again, we're talking about faith to destroy mental strongholds. A couple weeks ago, we went back to San Antonio. Uh, we went back to San Antonio to our home church to teach. And prior to us leaving, Leslie was looking for some clothes that she wanted to wear. You know, lady has clothes and storages and all that type of stuff. Me and we ain't got that. At least I, I don't have all that. But anyway, she has it. But so we discovered as we were going through the store, went to the storage, uh, uh, you know, it's up in our attic or right next to it. It's in our attic, okay? But we discovered we had squirrels. You know, they, they had crept their little way into our storage attic. And, and so we kind of had to figure out how to get these little dudes out. Because you know what? They're rodents, man. They're little, they're, I just think they're a bigger version of rats, but that's just my opinion. You know what I mean? That's because I just had a bad experience. But so I called some help. I called some guys up and I was talking to some people about trying to get them out of there. And I had a couple conversations and I had some very interesting conversations. But, but one of the things I learned about squirrels, they're, they're kind of like bad relatives, man. They, they kind of find their way into your house and they come and go as they please and, and they leave poop all over the place. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And so we had to deal with that. And, and so finally, after some investigation, uh, we found their entry point. They used a little space where the builder had cut, cor had cut a corner and, and they chewed the wood into our attic to sneak in. And see, listen, let me show you what I mean. So the builder, this is how he had, there was a piece of wood like this square. Well, this was supposed to fit just like that. Well, the builder left a little space. He cut a corner. He left a little space just like this, and the, and the, and the squirrels chewed this part off and came on in. That's what they did. So listen, when, when we cut corners, it simply means we're cheating the process, and then we cover it up like they did, like thinking no one else would know, not knowing that it would affect us who would be living in the house later, <laughs> right? So sometimes the areas of our lives that affect our faith the most is the area that we cut corners, to, cut, cut corners the most in, and that's, that's, that's in the area of our attitude. Yeah, see, our attitude is one of the areas... That we, we'll cut a corner and we can hide it and we think, oh, we'll be okay. It ain't going to affect my faith. It ain't going to affect how I live. Oh, it does. Oh, 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 it does. See, listen, I got corrected this week by the, by the, by the Spirit of God how I was cutting corners and some things I had been praying about. And then I was, I was going to him, talking to him about my faith and my, you know, Lord, what's happening and blah, 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 and why it's taking so long. See, I talk to God like that. I hope you do too. But just talking to him in my conversation, and, and, and but one of the things I realized is that my attitude, just like your attitude, is it's the door or the gate or the hole where spiritual rodents come in to make you depress, make you worry, make you full of anxiety, make you angry, make you turn to things like lying and drugs and all those things. Can a brother get an amen in the comment if, that, if that's you? No, it is. See, it, it, it's, it's through our attitude. And, and see what happened to me, God woke me up this week and said something, then let me go back to sleep. Has that ever happened to you? Where God wakes you up and says something, then you go back to sleep and you wake up and say, hey, what, what was that about? But he said to me, he said, Darren, you need to change your attitude toward the things that you're believing me for. Oh, well, so that just kind of messed me up because, you know, I had something I want to really talk about in that. But he began to show me what he was saying. He said, listen, uh, so what I did was I start I, I grab the scriptures I start studying the scriptures I start seeing I said oh yes this is this is the spirit of God because I realized it was my attitude that allowed the anxiety into my thoughts it was my attitude toward the stuff I'm dealing with oh yeah see listen it was my attitude that allowed anger to get in it was my attitude that allowed anxiety to come in it was my attitude that's why I love reach again I, I, I'm always plugging reach you all. That's why I love it, because just like, and we're studying this also in our minister's class, I have seen far, I, well, I've seen people in far worse situation than me, but yet they had a better, a, a better attitude, and they had a way better, listen, their faith was functioning way better than mine, and eventually they got what they were expecting. Why? Because they did not allow their attitude to affect their faith, and that's what was happening to me. So I got rebuked. Come on, man. Listen, God will honor your faith. He's going to honor your faith. Faith going to work. I, I tell you, just like it's worked in your life. We talked about this last week. It worked in your life. Uh, I mean, you, you know how you, you, you have faith for your life? And then we have faith. This is, this is God's side, right? 
uh, you know, we have faith in God, but just like we have faith over here uh, in our life and faith in God, your faith will work, man. But when it comes to God, he will honor your faith, but he will rebuke and discipline your attitude. Because your attitude is the door where mental strongholds come in. It's how they come in. Okay, Let, let's break this down. Let me give you a biblical example. Okay, look at this is Acts 16, 22 through 26. All right, it's Acts 16, 22 through 26. It says, it says, the judges, the judges went along with, with the mob and had Paul and Silas clothes ripped off and ordered a public beating. Y'all see that? After the beating, after beating them black and blue, they threw them into jail, telling the jailkeeper to put them under heavy guard. So there was no chance of escape. He did just that. He threw them into maximum security, into a maximum security cell uh, in the jail, and he clamped legs, clamped leg irons on them. Along about midnight, Paul and Silas was in prayer, singing a robust hymn to God. The other prisoners couldn't believe their ears. Then, without warning, a huge earthquake. The jail, the jailhouse tottered. Every door flew open, and all the prisoners were loose. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? So listen, so what happened? See, just like that, because of Paul and Silas' attitude did not affect their faith. <laughs> My God. It was their attitude that caused, that listen, that, that helped their faith to cause them to rise above what they were dealing with. It was their attitude toward it. And see, that's where I was. God had to check me on that this week. Now listen, because one thing we have to realize as the people of God is that there is a spiritual invisible war going around going uh, around us every day. That's why, I, you know, you probably heard these words say, that, that's why, you know, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And you're absolutely right, because we're fighting a spiritual fight. We're fighting it on, on different levels and on different, in different places. We're fighting it at home. We're fighting it at work. We're fighting it in relationship, fighting it at church, fighting it in the family. That's why we have to battle thoughts of all of these fights that's going on in our mind. We have to battle them, just like Paul and Silas. But Paul and Silas, they had amazing attitudes, man. They were beaten. Think about it now. They were beaten. They were, you know, when you, you strip of your clothes, you mean you're pretty much naked. You mean, I don't know if they had underwear in them days. I don't know if they had Fruit of Balloon. I don't know if they had those things like that. But, but they were stripped and then beaten. And then, I mean, come on, that's all that's the reason to have shame. But yet they still worship God. Because, now listen, their faith worked. We, 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 we saw the end result. God sent an earthquake. Their faith was working all along. But listen, it was their attitude that they kept in check that caused them to get the results they expected. What's hindering you from getting the results you're, you're expecting? I can promise you it's probably the, your attitude. But listen, let let, let's, let's define faith. Listen to this. Look at this. We, we talked about this last week. We, we established this, all right, that faith is the ability to believe something and then act on what you believe. So listen, our faith, just like we said, we have faith. We use it in life all the time. I told you I was going to have me some signs, didn't I? We use faith in life all the time. We use it for our job. We use it, you know, we get in our cars. We, we do different things. We use faith. But when it comes to faith in God, it's the area where we struggle. Okay? But we're going to show you how not to, you ain't got to struggle. Because the same way you use your faith in life, you can use that faith in God. Matter of fact, you want to put your faith in God and, and, and transfer it to your life. Right. <laughs> and really see the results that you believe you can you can you can have. All right. Because, listen, God came through for faith uh, for uh, Paul and Silas. No, we're real because our faith in God would cause us to supersede any attack of the enemy. The issue is we have to line our attitude up with our faith. I just couldn't imagine the thoughts that was going through their mind. Come on now, think about it. They've been put in jail. They're serving the Lord. They're doing the Lord's work, man. They're out there. Paul, they were, they were preaching the gospel. This young girl was behind them. Paul had to cast the devil out of her because she was, you know, screaming stuff. And Paul cast the devil out. And then the people got mad because they were losing money because she was bringing money in. <laughs> and they threw them in jail and beat them. But listen, they never changed their attitude. They didn't change it. Uh, listen, I'm here to tell you, man, right? They aligned their attitude up with their faith. Listen, let me, let me give you, let me give you uh, a definition of mental strongholds because I want you to get this. Listen, mental strongholds are a pattern of thinking Satan uses to help you build a house or a fortress to protect his place of control in your life. 
You see that? Now I got this definition from a pastor. Uh, uh, his definition of stronghold was really, really good, so I got it from him. It, it, but it is, it's, it's just a pattern of thinking. That's all it is. That's why we have anger and worry and all those things up. Now listen, Moses, I, I read Deuteronomy 6 last time to you guys because God was telling Moses, he said, Moses, make sure that they, they follow these commands. Matter of fact, take my words and, and, and talk about them when you go to bed. Talk about them when you get up. Put them on the doorpost. Put them on the gatepost. What is he doing? He's saying establish so the people will have a pattern of thinking when it comes to me. A pattern of thinking that would affect their faith. That's what he's saying. A pattern of thinking that will affect their faith. That's how, that's, listen, that's how, that's how an attitude really is. So, so of course, after reading this, I, I had to... Uh, I had to uh, look up what, what an attitude is because I just wanted to look it up. I just think, you know, hey, stronghold. See, because stronghold is a churchy word. And people who ain't churchy, they don't know what that is. What's a strong? You got a stronghold. They be like, what, the, what is that? All that means is really you have a pattern of thinking that, that, that causes certain things to, to, to be concretized in your mind. And then you act those things out. But let me show you. Let me show you. This is what Wester said. Listen to this. Attitude is a settled way of thinking or feeling about something or someone typically reflected in a person's behavior. Y'all see that? Man, that's, that's, listen, that's good, all right? So what does that, that help us understand? Is that really when we say mental strongholds, we're talking about really attitudes. We're talking about attitudes. How you view something, right? And so again, that's what Moses told, told that's what God told Moses. He said, Moses, make sure they follow these because I want to have a pattern of thinking. You see how Satan, nothing he does is new. He copies God. God says, hey, Moses, teach them this. Uh, 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 have them teach their kids when they go to bed, when they get up. All those things. Why? So they'll have a pattern of thinking when it comes to God. And all Satan does, and the reason why we have to deal with these, these strongholds in our attitude and all that is because Satan is, he comes to make us have a pattern of thinking. Okay, look, here we go. Now, so, so why is my attitude so important to my faith? We've got to get down to it. Okay, why is it, why is it so important? Right here, because listen, I said this last week, the fight we're engaged in, it, it's a fight that's fought first in the mind. Yeah, if Satan can set up territory in your mind, in other words, if he can establish a pattern of thinking for you about whatever issue you struggle with, whether it's lust or whatever, if he can help set up a pattern of thinking, victory for you won't be easy. You have to really use your faith in God in order to impact your life. Why? Because he will set up a pattern of thinking that calls you to think negative and defeated and doubtful and all those things and questioning, always questioning God, right? It will be hard for you to believe God is with you. Why? Because he's, he's lied to you and those thoughts have set up a fortress like we saw, a fortress that says, no, God ain't for you and he is for you, all right? So why is it, why is my attitude important to my faith? Here's number one, number one, listen. Changing your attitude is the precursor to a changed mind. Romans 12, let me read it for you, 12, 1 and 2. Listen to what it says. It says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living, holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Listen to what he says. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God, what, transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Breaking that pattern. Listen. He said, breaking that pattern of thinking or your attitude. Okay? Listen. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You see that? Because, listen, oftentimes, we are, at least this is what I was doing this time, and this is why God corrected me this week. Hey, listen, it was wonderful too. Oh, man. There's nothing like when God talks to you and tells you and corrects you, and then it, it blesses your life. But 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 I, I was saying to God, hey, man, listen, we've been praying and believing, Lord, you know, where we at on this thing? You know, I'm just talking to God. I'm just saying, hey, you know, where we at on this? We believe in God. We want this thing to happen, Lord, blah, blah, blah. And he, it wasn't, it's not my faith. Listen, my faith is working. He said, but it's your attitude, Darren, that needs to make some adjustment. Come on. I love that scripture because he said, let God transform you. That's what Paul said. He said, let God transform you. How's he going to do it? Change the way you think. He's going to break the pattern of thinking that, that has been running your life so that you can line your attitude up with your faith and then you, you'll, see the, you'll see the results. I, I'm going to show you biblically. You'll see results. We just saw it. Paul and Silas saw results in the jail. They saw results. 
Oh my God. I told y'all last week about my high school football coach. Love that man. I wish I could, I haven't seen him in a while. I would love to see him. But listen, he came and changed the culture of our team. Uh, he, he did. We were losing. They were losing. They were, we didn't win no game. They were, they were losing. He came in and changed his culture. How? He became in, he changed the way we were thinking. He changed our attitude, which is a pattern of thinking. That's all a pattern of thoughts that build stuff in, that build houses in our mind that we use and think and act from. That's all it is. Okay? So he came in and Coach Tyre, he changed the way we were thinking. That's what he did. Had us, I said last week, he had us believing we can beat anybody. Those short guys, <laughs> we weren't too big. But he had us believe it. Why? Because he changed, he changed our minds. And he changed our minds because he changed our attitudes. And we begin to think different. Man, come on. Listen, why is my attitude so important to my faith? Number two, listen, because you change your attitude, you will change your life. I'm sorry. Your cha you change your attitude and your life will change. I'm sorry. All right. So, so change your attitude. Your life will change. Come on, man. Listen, I am I am right here in Atlanta, Georgia today. You know why? Change attitude. Because I told y'all the story. I didn't want to go back to Texas, San Antonio, in particular, after I finished with my training in the military. I didn't want to go back to San Antonio. I, I begged God. I fasted. I prayed. I tried to swap assignments with other people. I tried, but it wouldn't work. Nobody wanted to go back to Texas. We know why? Because it was my assignment to go. But because when I got there, God, see, listen, God was teaching me this, and I didn't even know I was being taught this. It's, it's years later I'm realizing that, hey, this is how he did this with me. And so I'm teaching this to you all now because God taught me years ago. He, I had to change my attitude about San Antonio. I had to change everything. And listen, because I changed my attitude, because I changed my attitude, God took me to my spiritual parents, my spiritual father and mother in the gospel, Pastor Bishop Copeland and, and Pastor Claudette Copeland. He, he connected to me with them. I went to college. I met my wife. I got great family relationships with people there. I got friends that's crazy. I mean, just we just love each other like <laughs> no other. I got, I got part, listen, even my family members had moved to San Antonio because I was there. I had three kids. They were all born there. Now listen, how does all of that happen? Because God changed my attitude. He helped me. I had to change my attitude. Oh, listen, I'm, I'm going to read it again. This is Romans 12 too. He says, don't copy the behaviors of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Listen to what it says. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. You see that? So your learning process won't even start until your attitude change. You can't really learn nothing about faith until your attitude change because you won't believe it. Come on, people. So I had to learn it. God had to teach me. So this week, this is what Spirit of God, again, this week, Spirit of God said to me, he said, listen, you, 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 you stop being grateful. And, and I was like, no, I'm, but I'm, you know, but he was right. Because I, 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 you know, I had me a system of being grateful what I did every day. I had stopped. And I'm telling you something now. You're either grateful or you're something else. You're either grateful or you're, if you're not grateful, you're going to be critical. You're going to be worry wart. You're going to be angry or you're going to be depressed. Either one. That's one of them or some, some other thing you're going to be. Because we're, 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 we're told and instructed by the scriptures, by, by, by the scriptures to, uh, to, be, to be grateful. And I was grateful, man. I was having a good time. And then I started getting over and, and, and my attitude shifted towards some things I'm believing God for. And all of a sudden it changed. I was all frustrated and you know, it's not sleeping and all that. And Spirit of God said, hey. And now let me tell you something. Since I made the attitude change, I've been sleeping all through the night. So one night I woke up. Maybe, maybe. But I woke up. <laughs> and I went right back to sleep. God woke me up. Right, right back to sleep. Why? You know why? Because my attitude changed. My pattern of thinking changed. Come on, man. I hope y'all get some. I hope you get some out of this. But, 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 but again, you're either grateful or you're something else. And nothing speaks louder about what you believe than your attitude. Come on now. But what I love about that scripture, that's true. Nothing speaks louder what you believe than your attitude. But listen, what I love about that scripture, what it says, it says, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasant, pleasing, and perfect. 
right? So the will of God is known to us by the changing of our attitude. I didn't even know San Antonio was the will of God. I didn't know until I changed my attitude. I said, God, God sent me here. I Listen, I said, God got up in, in church testifying, thanking God for sending me to San Antonio, for connecting me to the people. Why did that happen? That was the same dude a couple months ago, a year ago or so, who was begging God, crying up there in Wichita, Wichita Falls, Texas, saying, God, please don't send me back to that place. But the same dude, now standing up in church saying, praise the Lord, God sent me, right? He guided my footsteps. You know how we get out holy. He guided my steps. Thank the Lord. All that. I did all of it. <laughs> all because I changed my attitude. Come on, man. Because listen, when you, when we, when, when you close the door, you close that shortcut. Y'all remember to talk about the shortcut? When you close those shortcuts to demonic thoughts in your life, the enemy don't have place to build fortresses in your mind. But this is why people, listen, this is why people die. They commit suicide. The people get on drugs. Come on, man. People make bad decisions, commit adultery, all these type things. Why? Because they allow the enemy to, to um, uh, just use these crazy thoughts to come into their mind. But he comes through your attitude. He comes through your attitude, how you're seeing what you're going through. Come on, man. I'm, I'm preaching good. You ain't have to say amen. Ah, so listen, let's, let's, let's talk about it. We're going to get into our lesson now. Uh, we're almost done. Praise the Lord. Listen, so how do I stop cutting corners with my attitude? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Just like the squirrel. I told you the squirrel, they cut corners. Somebody, somebody who built my house, they're supposed to be like this, but they left that space and those squirrels came in. So our, our question today is how do we stop cutting corners with our attitude? Because listen, your faith going to work. I'm trying to tell you, your faith in God, if you take your faith in God and put it in your life, Right? Your faith in God. I'm telling you, the things that you believe God for, God will, God will answer your prayers. He will do it. Right? But, like as I said, as I said earlier, you can't stay in faith with a bad attitude. There's no way. No way. I, I was talking to God this week about something. I said, Lord, you know, so and so, I really want this done. And it just seemed like ain't nothing happened, Lord. I mean, listen, I'm being honest with you. I walk by faith. I do. I quote the scriptures. I go over there. I'm telling you all that. I do. But there's some times I'll be looking at the circumstances like, whoo, this need to hurry up. I get impatient. <laughs> I do. So I have to learn, man. Hey, God said to me, he said, it ain't about my, your faith. You know it's going to change, Darren. You know it's going to change. This is what he said. You know it's going to change. Yes, I do, Lord. I know you. Yeah, he said, so then uh, you need to check your attitude. How you viewing things. How you allow Satan to cut, to come through the, those, those corners that, that you've been cutting. He comes in and builds fortresses in your mind. Come on, we got. let's talk about how, So how do we stop cutting corners? How do we stop cutting corners with our attitude? Hey, hey, number one, listen. We must take our, our walk with God seriously. Oh, yeah. See, we, we got to take our walk with the Lord serious. Because sometimes we don't do that. Man, let's be honest. Come on. Not enough of us take our relationship with God seriously enough. Like we in reach, right? I, I, I've been saying this for over some. Hey, y'all need to get in reach. Hey, you need to be a part of reach. You need a discipleship program that's going. Because most Christians are not discipled at all. They're not. Most Christians, they don't even read their Bible. Most Christians have never read their Bible from cover to cover. Have never done it. You don't know the blessing you're missing. Come on, man. So we have to take our relationship. Again, I'm talking about cutting corners. Because again, I said get in reach, get in reach. Why? So that you, so that when you begin to build your spiritual house, there will be no corners connect cut to. Uh, uh, there will be no corners to cut, <laughs> because we just hide things until we get in close relationships, and then stuff blow up, and then we can't handle it when it blow up. Ah oh, well, come on, all right, all right, come on, come on. So we must, we must take our relationship with God, our walk with God seriously. Here's why. Let me read the scripture. This is Deuteronomy six. I, I've referenced it several times. Listen though, it says, "And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart." All your soul, all your strength. You see that? This is, this, is, this is Moses telling the people what God told him. Listen, and you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Listen to what he says. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you're getting up. You see that? Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as a reminder. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. You see that? So he said, hey, listen, repeat these things. Say them, put them up so you can see them. Put them on your hand. Put them on your forehead. What does he say? He said, repeat them. Repeat the commands that God has given you. No, man. 
Because I'm, I'm here to tell you. Now, I don't know who made the vision board popular. I think it might have been Oprah. She, she was probably one of the most popular people that put up the vision board. And then everybody got vision board. The people got stuff up. Uh, hey, I'm good with that. Fine. I, I'm, I'm for it 100%. But listen to me. I just pray that your vision board is based on the scriptures and what the Bible and what you believe God has said about your life. Right? Because this is the first vision board right here. It's right here in the scriptures. You see it, Deuteronomy 6. Nobody made it up. Nobody copied nobody. It came right from the scripture. I told you the world copies God. It does. And so God said, hey, put this up. Why? So don't you, listen, so that you can establish, you can establish a pattern of thinking. That's how vision is. That's how the vision board is, is to get you to thinking about the things that you're believing for. Where God said, do this a long time ago. Hopefully you got this up in your house. You got scriptures up. You got them, you know, you got things up. You believe in God. For, I hope you got it all up. Why? Because that's what the scripture says that we're to do. And I'm here to tell you, it's how you break the mental strongholds that causes us to have bad attitudes. Or we break the bad attitudes that, call, that, that affects our faith. So ask yourself this question. Have you drawn the line on the scriptures? What do you mean by that? Have you put into practice these things that, we, that we're talking about? Have you, have you used the scriptures to combat some of the thoughts that you're having? No, listen, the enemy does things to keep us from knowing God. He battles our thoughts, our thinking, to keep us from knowing who God is. That's why you have to fight to come to prayer or be in prayer. You have to fight to read the scriptures. You have to fight to be in reach. Why? Because the enemy is attacking your thoughts and your mind. But you have to draw the line and say, hey, I'm going to believe the scriptures. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do exactly what the scriptures say. I'm going to put them up so I can see them. <laughs> come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. Now, listen. All strongholds must be recognized and addressed. Oh, yes. They got to. So whatever thoughts you have. So let, let me give you an example. I have a friend that, uh, that would not get on an airplane. Still hasn't this day. They've been married for many years. The wife would not get on an airplane. I had another friend. These are people I've been knowing for many, many years. Uh, uh, well, another friend. She was so afraid she would not drive on the highway because she listened to the news and all that. So she all she did was drive on the side roads. Now, that's crazy, but she did. That's all she did, drive on the side road. Her husband had to ride in the car with her in order for them to ride on the highway because she was afraid somebody was going to hit her. Those are strongholds. Those are patterns of thinkings. Listen, pattern of thinkings, thinking that has affected her, her mind and build a fortress <laughs> in their heads. So that's why they won't do the things they know they should or they can. Not listen, and because again, then you have a you, the attitude they have was one of fear, one of anxiety. And, and all that comes from this pattern of thinking. Okay? So their faith will work, but their attitude, your attitude will never allow you to see it. You see that? Now listen, all strongholds must be recognized and addressed. You have to. Satan doesn't care. That's why he comes after us as kids. Come on, man. Most of the things people deal with that are really strongholds in their mind, they started as a child. Listen, my sexual Issues, problems, addictions. I didn't do pornography, but I did fornicating, okay? <laughs> I, I told y'all before, it's no secret God has delivered me, all right? And so, so listen, all that started as a child. It didn't start when I got an adult. That started, for me, it started as a child. It came to me as a child. All that was introduced to me as a child. Why? To develop a pattern of thinking. <laughs> to develop, so it set up stronger. Most people that deal with, with, with uh, um, uh, pornography, it's been a pattern of thinking in their mind that has built a fortress. And it takes God to come in, their faith in God to come in to deliver them and set their lives free. Y'all here, again, you got to deal with these strongholds. But you, the way you deal with it first, you got to take your walk, your walk with God serious. These scriptures, you need to have some scriptures, some overcoming scriptures up in your house. Some overcoming scriptures uh, uh, in your office, on your phone. Come on, man. I used to have them everywhere. When I was in the military, I had them my, my roommates thought I was crazy. They, 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 I probably was, but they thought I was crazy. Because, listen, I bought in. The Bible said do that. Do that. I'm doing it. Come on, man. What are we talking about? How do, I, how do I stop cutting corners with my attitude? Oh, yeah. How do I do it? 
Because I'm telling you, the enemy was going to come. He comes to you as kids. I'll give you another example. My, uh, you guys know my mom died when I was young from a liver issue. So anytime I got sick, the first thing came to my mind was, oh, Lord, I wonder what that is. The first thing. I was sick in the, when I was in the military. I, I, got, I got sick, right? And the doctor was trying to figure out what's wrong with me. I ain't know what's wrong with me. I was young. And, and, and I just remember sometime later, I, I remember going to my, my, my uh, primary care doctor, and I was talking to him about it. He said, what does all that got to do with you? I said, well, you know, my mom died. He said, man, that ain't got nothing to do with you. You're, you're, that, your liver is perfect. You're, it's fine. And he said, where did you get that thinking from? You, you see that? This is what my doctor told me. And, 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 but, but again, see, God had already taught me how to overcome that. But I, was, I had allowed to get back in. But I'm telling you, how do these things get in? They come in through the pattern of thinking or your attitude. And they build a stronghold. So you have to check your attitude. Check how you're viewing it. How are you viewing this thing that you're dealing with? How are you viewing it? Come on, let's go to number two. Number two, number two. Listen, so how do I stop cutting corners? Number two is this. I read where I need, or, or, or read where you need. Read where you need, what you're dealing with. Dealing with anxiety. What scripture are you standing on concerning anxiety? Listen, you have to replace the thoughts in your, uh, uh, that you're dealing with with God's word. You have to. I used to when I was in the military, I had flashcards. I did. Y'all know my favorite scripture. I quote it all the time. I quote it all the time. First Peter 2.24. He personally carried my sins. He personally carried our sins in, in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your soul. You see that? So the scripture says he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we be dead to sin. We live for what is right. And by whose wounds or his stripes, we are what? We're healed. So I had me a little car, and I had this scripture everywhere I go. I would take it out. And I was going to the doctor. They didn't know what's wrong with me. I ain't know what's wrong with me either. <laughs> so I would be reading this scripture. He, he, he carried my sins on his body on the tree. That I be dead to sin, I'm alive to rise. And by his stripe, I thank you, Lord, I am healed. That's what I was doing. So what was I doing? See, listen, whenever you're dealing with fortresses or whenever you're dealing with strongholds or an attitude of thinking in your mind, you have to replace those thoughts with greater thoughts, okay? You must replace thoughts with greater thoughts because you just can't replace a thought. It's too difficult. I'm telling you the truth. It's too difficult. And I, I, you've seen people give this example. I'm going to give it to you now. Let me just say the Dallas Cowboys. Y'all see, you see, it just came up in your head. Some of y'all don't know. Okay, let me do something else. Let me see, uh, let me see the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> just have fun. But listen, so all of a sudden, that's in your mind. You think about the Dallas Cowboys. You think about blue and gray. You think about how wonderful of a team they are. You think about how good they are. You think about that Prescott. All that, you think about it. So how do you get that out of mind? You have to think about something, you have to think about something greater. All right. Who do you think about? You think about the Kansas City Chiefs. They're greater than us right now. They just, you know what I mean? And so I'm, the, I'm using a sporting analogy, but if I, if, I, if I use the blue car, I say a blue car. So that blue car is in your mind. And it'll stay in your mind until I say red car. You see that? So red car comes in, push it out. It's that simple. It's that simple. This is how, listen, this is how I got victory over fornicating. This is how. Because the, my thought life which affected my attitude toward sex. I began to say, oh, I'm going to wait till I'm going to get married. I'm going to wait for my wife. Before I was saying that, I was saying something you don't want to hear. <laughs> but I had to replace those thoughts, listen, with greater thoughts. And I did. I would say, listen, I was believing, I was believing for healing, but I was confessing the word about sin. And because I was confessing God's word about sin, it was replacing all the stuff Satan had put up there about sex and all of that. It was replacing it. So I began to say, oh, I'm dead to sin. Come on, man. Oh, no, no, I'm dead to that. I don't respond. Dead means I don't respond to it. I don't have to. Jesus already responded to it. He died for it. I don't have to respond. So I'm not going to do it. I don't respond. So I start seeing myself getting married. <laughs> I started seeing myself getting married, waiting on my wife. Why? Because those, those greater thoughts came and took the place of those thoughts. And it changed my attitude about marriage and sex. So you got to replace thoughts with what? Greater thoughts. So I attacked the fear and the sin in my life. I had to. 
fear of dying early. All those things. I had to attack it with the word of God. I had the fact that I had to attack that sin issue in my life. How did I do it? I replaced those thoughts with greater thoughts. And I'm here to tell you, man, our minds need the voice of God. It does. Uh, it does. That's why I love that scripture in Deuteronomy when he says, hey, let, wherever you go, talk about it. Why? Because our minds need the pattern of God flowing through it. Oh, my gosh. It needs, the, it needs God's voice repeatedly coming through over and over again, over and over again. We need to hear his voice. When God says things to me, and hopefully I, I know it's to you, it is so nice and peaceful and so just so enriching. I just benefit from just his voice saying, son, you need to deal with those attitudes that you deal with, that you, that you have. Yeah, you need to change your attitude toward those. You change your attitude, you'll see your faith. My faith, listen, faith works. We talked about it. We work it. We work our faith in God works. Then we, you know, the faith we, we use over here in our lives, it's the same thing. It, it'll work. But the issue we, we struggle with is how we view things. And all of that takes place because of our attitude. We have to change that. We have to, we have to change that, that process of thinking. Okay? That's all it is. Come on. We're going to go to our last point. It's our last point. Listen. So how do I stop cutting corners with my attitude? Number three. Number three is, listen, you got to keep your guard up during meditation times. You got to keep your guard up. Oh, yeah. See, there are certain times that the enemy comes, and he knows when he can come and talk to you. He comes inside of your bed and starts talking. You know what? You know that girl? Boy, that she sure was fine. Oh, my God. Did you see her? Oh, Lord. You couldn't see her. In the, man, she, you seen him? Oh, he is so, you see them shoulders? Oh, my God, that man. He got cute eyes, girl. He tall. Ooh. He knows when to come. But see, you got, you got to stay on guard. And see, by using the, the scriptures and repeating them, re replacing thoughts with greater thoughts, you keep your guard up when it, in, during meditation times. No, not really. Because, see, again, the enemy comes to build by repeating. He has nothing new. He's copying God. God establishes a pattern for us, but he said, repeat, repeat it, repeat it. <laughs> so Satan comes and he says to us, repeat it. She's so fine. Repeat it. She's so fine. Repeat it. He's so, oh my God. Repeat it. Oh, oh, he is just, oh. And that's what we do. And all before we know it, we, our, our thoughts go that way. Right? And then we develop this thing where we have, we have to, you know, repeat failure, repeat failure. It's how you know you got a stronghold. You just repeat failure stuff. Repeat fail, repeat fail. I mean, that's what I was. I got, I got in a cycle of just couldn't, couldn't help it. Why? Because my attitude had not changed when it came to that issue of sexuality. Are y'all still here? So listen, so you got to stay guard during meditation time. When is meditation time? First, let me read the scripture. This is Psalms 1, 1 through 3. It says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit in each season. Their, their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. You hear that? Da this is David. Now, David is a product of Moses' instruction. Deuteronomy 6, we just read it. He's a product. This is his version. Or in other words, listen, this is him paraphrasing that, that verse. This is what I believe. He's paraphrasing this, this, right? Because he's saying the same thing. He said, you meditate on it day and night. Uh, Moses said, hey, when you get up in the morning, when you go to bed at night. So listen, we are most vulnerable at night and in the morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you are. You are most of your thoughts. Most of your thoughts come in the morning time and at night. You laying down to sleep. And what you listen, unless you just dog tired, you just you know, otherwise you're thinking. And that's where them thoughts come in. Boom, boom, boom. That's why you get that's why, you know, we get them late night calls, Netflix and chill calls. Why? Because in the middle, it's the night. You have to guard yourself from that. Oh, yeah. He said, meditate day and night. Now, we know during the day when we're working, you, you're probably not meditating on the scriptures. You're probably not. Even when you're having casual, you're not working. But, but when, he, when, he, when it says day and night, it's talking about those moments when you're, when you're going down and you're getting up. It's the same thing Deuteronomy said. So David is a byproduct of Moses' instruction. But look what he said. He says, if you do this, verse 3, he said, he said, they are like trees planted by the riverbank. Bearing fruit in each season, their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. You see that? He says, if I learn this principle of taking these thoughts and put it in greater thoughts, I'll prosper in everything I do. It helped me get delivered. I'm trying to tell you. They, they, eventually they found out what was wrong with me and they were able to treat me and all those type things. But listen to me, people. 
David said, hey, you really want some victory? You really want to overcome? Change your attitude. Change your, your pattern of thinking toward that circumstance. And put God's thoughts in there and see won't it give you victory in everything you do. In everything you do, <laughs> you will, right? So you will overcome in all you do. That's what he says. If you get this principle of replacing these thoughts, he said, in all you do, you'll overcome. See, listen, with them squirrels, what I had to do, I had to go find their place where they was shortcutting. You know, they had cut, you know, they got in there and all that. I had to go and find it. I had to patch it up and put some wood over it and put some stuff in there and spray it down and all this to get them not come back. I did all that to get them clowns out of my house. I had to do all those things, right? But eventually, guess what? Didn't see them again. They ain't come back. You know why? Because I had closed the their, their, their entryway into us. And that's what we do when we take God's word seriously now. We, put, we, 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 we apply it to our lives. We, we read it when we read what we need. Okay? We do those things. And then before you know it, you look up, you say, oh my God, we got victory. We got the victory, we got the victory over the squirrels. We got the victory. They ain't come back. Mama ain't come back. She ain't bring the kids back. None of them. They ain't come back. But the same principle will apply to your life. These, those things will go. All right? When they come back, you just hit them with the word. <laughs> come on, man. You be, listen, you, you, you need something from God. What you, what, what, grab your scripture. Stand on that scripture. Put it up over your house. Put it on your phone. Put it as a reminder on you. Why? So that you can break down the stronghold that's trying to gain entry into your life. All right, did you receive something from that today? Listen, I, this is a good word. I preached to myself today. Uh, you, you guys are just in the room, but I'm going to preach to myself. Now, to go back, and you got to go back and listen to these first two because we're going to build from here on out. Next week's going to be really good. We're going to be Mother's Day. We're going to be here online at 10 o'clock. Don't miss it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for, for allowing us to be here. You're so good. Thank you for this word. I pray that your people receive and, and that they're able to, to grab it. You taught me this many years ago. And I just, I'm just teaching the people, but I, I'm corrected from this week. And I just pray for my brothers and sisters that it, it found them and then that they'll be willing doers of your word. That's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, so listen, if you're here today, you say, Pastor Darren, that's me. I got to change my attitude. Hey, listen, it doesn't matter where you are. Paul and Silas was in prison, prison with with things clamped onto their legs, right? And they were in there worshiping and singing God. That's attitude. That's a pattern of thinking, right? That has come through their mind where they believed about God and their faith in God did the rest, all right? So if that's you, you say, Pat, I, need, I need to get my life right because I'm tripping and I really need to get right. Okay, listen, I need you to just pray this prayer. Say, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Teach me your ways, and I'll live for you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Hey, if you prayed that prayer with all sincerity, you're not born again. God will teach you how to get rid of Because we, we have a variety of strongholds that come in our life. We all do have to fight them. We have to get them out. But the, he'll, he'll teach you through the scriptures how to get them out, how to be free and overcomer over these fortresses that the enemy bring our way. All right? Hey, if you're looking for a good church, we believe you're a good church. Be an e-partner with us. Continue to support our church through your giving. Uh, but we want to disciple you. We want to sh show you what it means to be a disciple of Christ. If that's you, type partner in the, in the comments. We'll send you information on what that's about. Hey, this is Pastor Darren. I love you guys. I'm checking out. I see you online. I'll see you in person next week. I love you. God bless. Peace out. Hey, man, appreciate that word, Pastor D. Thank you for bringing us another edition of your sermon series this morning. And Crossroads fam, I hope you all took plenty of notes Go back and review those notes during the week so that word will seek deeper into your heart. And also, make sure you check out the sermon again later on this week on our Crossroads YouTube page or on our Sermon Engine Online. Well, here at Crossroads Church, we make sure we make it a priority to help people take their next steps in their relationship with Jesus. And we all know that sometimes before you can take a next step, you got to take the very first step. And that very first step is making the decision to follow Jesus. It's making that decision to accept him as our Lord and Savior in our lives. And hey, if that's you today, if it's on your heart and you're saying, hey, I really want to make that decision to follow Jesus, I want to take my very first step and making him the Lord of my life. You can do so today. And we're so excited and eager to help you do so as well because it's the best step that any of us could ever take. So if that's you this morning and you're ready to take that first step, just in the comment section, type in the phrase life 
to Christ. Once you type that phrase in, that'll alert our staff that we need to make sure we reach out to you. We give you some love, we give you some encouragement, and we pass alongside some information for you to help you in your brand new journey. Because again, we're so excited for you, and we want to help you know what it means to be loved by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So hey, again, if that's you, type in that phrase, like to Christ, in the comment section below, and we'll help you on your brand new journey journey. If you all need prayer this morning, our prayer team is ready to pray with you and for you. Look, we've got a section right now in the comment section where you can click on a link and submit a prayer request. Now note that prayer request does not have to be just for you. It could be for a friend. It could be for a family member. It could be for a certain situation that you just need prayer for. So again, click on that link in the comment section. If you do have a prayer request and our prayer team will be ready to pray with you and for you. Again, Crossroads fam, we're going to give everyone a chance to give if you didn't have a chance to do so earlier in our serving and PDL. And we know in the word, it always, is, it always is better to give than it is to receive. So it's on your heart to do so this morning. We're grateful for you. And you can do so with a few easy steps. If you've got the Cash App application on your smartphone, all you simply have to do is open it, type in the amount that's on your heart to give. And when you do so, type in our username, which will be dollar sign at crossroads a t l and then underneath that in the fourth section you can put whether it's for your tithes or just for your offerings if you don't have cash app no worries you can go using your smartphone or your laptop and visit our church website that has a giving feature the link is www.crossroadsatl.com forward slash give again that's crossroadsatl.com forward slash give. Once you get to that site, there will be some easy instructions so you can go ahead and fill out your giving that way. As you all are going ahead and giving again, I'll pray on our tithes and offerings this morning. Lord, we just ask that you will continue to use this tithes and offerings for the glory of your kingdom. Lord, we know that everything we've got comes from you and we're grateful. We enjoy taking this moment in our service to just honor you, God, and show you how grateful we are and how appreciative we are because we know, again, that everything comes from you. We love you, Lord, and we're so thankful. It's in Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Well, don't forget, we want to engage you all on social media. So make sure you're following us on Instagram, on Facebook. It's Crossroads ATL. That's our social media handle. Again, Crossroads ATL. We love engaging with you all and interacting with you all on social media. So make sure you follow us on Instagram and then also go ahead and follow us and like our page on Facebook. Again, Crossroads ATL. We can't wait to see you all during the week on social media. Well, everyone, that wraps up another amazing service here at Crossroads Online. Again, I'm Austin Smith signing off on behalf of our entire Crossroads team. We love you guys. We're praying for you, and we can't wait to see you next week for another edition here on Crossroads Online.